So apparently everything's fine, lockdown's been withdrawn, we flattened the curve and wait, no, I'm just getting a message, apparently it's all fucked. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so there was like a, a wonderful little halcyon moment where it was all, where it was like we flattened the curve, everything's gone to plan, we all stayed inside like a bunch of assholes, and things were okay. And then suddenly they were fucked again. We should clarify, we're Victorians. We are uh, Victorians. Yeah, so it's like definitely a problem here. So everywhere else seems to have gotten their shit together. Uh, <laughs> or at least they're not testing thoroughly to realize they don't have their shit together. But uh, we ha we're having a bit of a situation. So since we last saw you, I'm pretty sure it's been about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that was the exact two weeks where it went from being very much like, hey, yeah, Australia, through a factor of things that are like not exactly within our control, but basically luck, we managed to flatten the curve. We did it by being an island. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, no, not so much. So we yes. uh, since we've last been here, I think restrictions have been almost completely relaxed to like level two, level one sort of stuff. And now we're straight back, like parts of Melbourne are back to three. Is that right? Well, postcodes across Melbourne uh, are oh. in stage three lockdowns, which means you're only allowed to leave the house for essential supplies, um, I like don't know, humanitarian aid, to work Exercise. or to get jacked, which, you know, is a very good reason. But uh, yeah, other than that, you're not meant to leave the house. Uh, and to me, this is a weird way of doing it, this partial lockdown. So who's, who's done the partial lockdown and why have they done the partial lockdown? It has been invoked by um, Daniel Andrews, Victorian Premier, uh, because it's again, we're getting double to triple digit infections being discovered day by day Dude, it's in the, Victoria. Today was the, it's Sunday, or Saturday right now, and it was the Date second... Date goes here, bing! It was, I think this... The thing that they're saying is that it's the second highest Since transmission March. rate ever. Uh, ever. No, no, 108 today was the number of people they found with coronavirus. Not us though. I got tested again because I went on a humanitarian pie delivery run <laughs> and uh, hugged a whole bunch important. of people in uh, poisonous postcodes and then brought my germs home and had to sleep in the kennel for eight days until my test it results was the right came decision. back. It was the right <laughs> It was the best thing to do. Um, we washed you like we do the God, vegetables. we don't have a dog. Yeah, um, so they're, they're now lockdowning, locking down, lockdowning, oh, yeah. they're lockerizing, downerizing, uh, 12 different postcodes uh, across In Melbourne, the city. which seems like kind of a shit way to do it, as if, if like, this, you know, it's okay, I'm on the south side of the same fucking street, so I can just run around and I can go to Kmart, not the one in Barclay Square, they've closed that down for a coronavirus infection, mm. uh, to Kmart in um, Victoria. Where will Australia buy its uh, sweatshop goods? What's that brand? Anko. Anko. Where yeah. will you get your Anko everything from? Who knows? <laughs> when are you going to redo your bedroom with Anko bullshit? Who knows? It's Last a real decade problem. designs when you, all today. Kmart mums from that Kmart mums Facebook group, where are you going to get your bargains from? Honestly? Probably Coles. one of the thousands of <laughs> Kmarts that haven't been closed for coronavirus yet. Yeah. Um, Wait, but here's the thing. I feel like the premise is it's 300,000 people approximately in those. Spread across those 12 those lockdown 12 post postcodes, right? Postcodes. And how much was the population of Victoria? Like, gotta be a couple million. A couple right? million, yeah. Like, Five million, six million or something? Correct number will go here. there. I, I wonder by what order, order of magnitude we will be out. Anyway, like I'm pretty sure Melbourne's Some. like four million or something, right? Anyway, so it's the, I think the idea by locking down just individual postcodes is it makes it feel like or seem like, oh, it's just localized areas. It's not the whole thing. Like, you know, a, a town 500 kilometers away in East Gippsland. Why does that need to be in lockdown, you guys? Like yeah. that, that's the idea. However, I think there's a major flaw with the plan. Now, even during the very hot height of lockdown, mm. not everybody follows the rules. Correct. Agreed, right? So by doing just a partial lockdown of some suburb, suburbs, aren't we going to, we're basically, basically kind of like permitting half the people or most people to just be like carrying on like normal. And then a lot of the people who were in those suburbs are not going to follow those rules fully because it just seems so arbitrary. Because it does seem fairly arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. Why is it worse in Broadmeadows and Vendry Gully? Across or the road like or whatever. That. Yeah, yeah. Especially where they border yeah. with other towns. And the other thing is, it's not exactly going to foster solidarity. 
Well, is it? Yeah, no. Like, it should make you go, oh, look, I just want to say, as someone who's out in the countryside, you know, kudos to the brave people of Broadmeadows for accepting lockdown. No, you're like, place. please don't come here. Yeah, and we're all like, you fucking idiots, <laughs> or you broady scum. I knew you were scum, and now you're germ scum as well. Uh, yeah, so it's not fostering the kind of solidarity that they lent we heavily all, into yeah. when Remember? we were all in lockdown. We're all applauding. I mean, not me personally, but like people like applauding oh, people well, and we're all at the same time. Imagine if it was the Blitz and they're like, just these 12 postcodes are going to have reduced. No. No, I mean, uh, the Blitz was when the London Blitz was Creek. being bombed ah. or something like that. Or imagine if it was some other thing where they're like, look, just these 12 suburbs aren't going to have electricity. Okay, good work, guys, because they well, did the wrong thing. I think in a lot of other metropolitan areas across the world, there are favelas or whatever that are completely marginalized. So we're probably, I'm lucky. I mean, think of those, I mean, are you gonna, I, I assume we're gonna talk about the, the situation with the flats. We are gonna talk about the situation with the flats. So if you wanna look at class disparity. Class disparity. Ooh. We've been watching Snowpiercer and it turns out those flats are a fortress to class. Everything is class. A class, thousand class, and class. one, a thousand and one rising up into the sky. A thousand and one cars, upwards. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I just stomped on your feet. My class. Class, class destruction. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Now, so everybody knows that uh, commission housing, all right? So this is housing created. I'm sorry, what did you just say? It's Mishy Flats, I'll have you know. Commission, I'm giving it its proper Mishy. name. Mish, commission housing. Okay, so this is housing created by the government for our most vulnerable people. So it's like 98% uh, marginalized people, poor people. There's crazy um, wait lists for those flats because they're like they're rent are, control. Like maybe 2% are actually drug baron oligarchs, uh, but the rest of them are, you know, it's generally people who are doing it kind of hard. So there were 23 cases of um, infections of coronavirus discovered across the commission housing. It's nine different buildings, I believe. So 27, I can't do the math, but what's 23. It's uh, it's about a 23 out of 3,000, so it's like small, small. But it's a highly contagious disease, and if you remember from early on, they were like the poos in the buildings. In the oh, flats. and the circulating yeah. air and the cruise ships and well, stuff. Well, that's the thing. Doesn't this make you like it didn't work out great on those fucking cruise ships? Like, why would this be a good idea? Shouldn't we take everybody out, like evacuate them? Look, a um a study has already been done on the effect of locking everyone into a block of flats with a terrible disease. It's called Demons 2, produced by Dario Argento and uh, directed by Mario Bava, maybe his kid. Bava. Uh, yeah, and as we all know, what happens is toddlers turn into infected demons and crawl through the air ducts, infecting that everyone. That sounds basically like uh, what Yeah, so that basically, now everyone else is locked down, and this is why it's been so easy to, uh, you know, ignore lockdown, or maybe gather like a bunch of dickheads outside Parliament House and protest lockdown. It's uh, easy to no sell. You have to stay home unless you're going out for essential business. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna go uh, bathe the lepers. And so you're allowed to go out and you get out of having a fine. But these guys in the flats are on hard lockdown. And what that means is you can't fucking leave for nothing. And it starts now. Do you Basically they were told at midnight, boom. Yeah, whereas uh, everybody else in their suburbs had a good 48 hours, I think. To, yeah, like, I think prepare. it starts at midnight tonight. How is that? Like, it seems so egregiously because of the class. Like, how is that not a class? It has to be classism. Like, what is it about those towers? Well, I'm... Like, what is happening? I mean, there are images of police now at the base of those things. Not 500 like, shifts of five, 500 police officers. Five, and that's 500 at a time. At a time, across nine buildings. Uh, I've actually worked security at the Commission Housing in Richmond before. You seem like an excellent, um, were you banging everybody and like spreading jokes? No, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't, um, it wasn't in my job description. Otherwise, you know, if asked I would be by my security bosses, then I would have done my noble duty. But uh, yeah, it's, so I don't know, maybe these cops are also obliged to bang the machine car clients or something. I don't think so. Don't uh, we do know. They weren't supposed to be. <laughs> they weren't people. supposed to. Yeah, but this is pretty fucking intense. And combined with the fact that a lot of the suburbs that are also in lockdown are... They were supposed to, yeah. Shit cunt suburbs. <laughs> yeah, like no one, even though those two motherfuckers came back from Aspen from their skiing trip. Right. And went, is and, Sorrento um, completely on lockdown? And they or rubbed well their or COVID germs all over ever, all their friends' uh, silver cutlery. Yeah. Uh, none of those people were properly locked down. But uh, you poor fucking brown folk who can't stop touching each other and spreading the disease... Boom! Lockdown hard. They're not fucking around. It's um, gross. And uh, you know, it doesn't exactly um, 
come at the best time in the wake of sort of an increased focus on how police are treating those in marginalized <laughs> communities? Well, like, like, it's a bit of bad surely time. the easy thing to do is just, I understand you don't want the economic impact of the virus to like ruin small business. However, I'm pretty sure at this point, most small business is already ruined, right? Oh, what's, a, what's another two weeks? Honestly. Oh, do you mean if they're just, just gone for statewide either, lockdown? Either statewide or just Melbourne, the full of Melbourne. So but, at least it's... But even if it was a statewide lockdown, that would still be different to what's happening with these commission houses. Right, because that's like hard, hard lockdown. Hard lockdown. I just don't understand. I'm assuming in the coming days, like justification or at least some kind of okay. attempted explanation, explanation uh, will come out. What they have said is that firstly they, uh, hate, poor people. Uh, they hate poor people and they don't trust well them i mean they haven't them. said it but uh you know that's more a liberal policy than a labor policy but i'm pretty sure it's baked into their ethos too to fuck the poor um but uh they've said that due to the fact that um you know a lot of people who end up on the commission housing list uh do have disability issues do have other health related issues that makes them more vulnerable to infection a lot of old people as well and you know the fact is just if you're poor your health tends to be not so good Where are you because gonna go to get fixed? because good health even in our public health care country is still a privilege right uh, a privilege that you pay for don't worry you'll get to go on one of those beautiful waiting lists for the next five years while you wait to like be <laughs> serviced for to have a bullet cool. taken out of your ribs yeah. or something yeah uh so so part of their theory is these people are more vulnerable to the virus so we got to act now Why otherwise it will run to rife. the virus running rife through the air vents and like sewage system though <laughs> firstly i don't think these buildings have sewage. circulated <laughs> they don't have circulated air they don't <laughs> think so if they are lucky there is a 1960s portable air conditioner duct tape into one of the open windows yeah. like it's, it's again it's not the fucking Hyatt which you know these ho fancy hotels have also proven to be a um a, a, a virus fuck fest um but uh yeah so there's no air circulating around um but there sure is a sewage system and a well also system. I don't know if everyone's being like detained in their individual flats yeah are they, I, are they like, like I think there's cops on every floor is, is it going to be like a Judge Dredd situation where like we have a fight oh my god Mega way. City 1 yeah is it like a Mega mm. City 1 situation like obviously we all are familiar with the one on Flemington Road that has like the scum cunt king the flat. Bit yeah. the yep, where like the obviously the king lives of that flat and like are we gonna have like a situation Old where man we need to Fagan. have like, yeah are we gonna have like a fight level by level situation in order I'm to, pretty like, sure if someone on the top wants to go get a carton of milk from the milk bar next to the commission housing it's like the raid but upside down exactly down, exactly where they have to fight all the way down yeah. past a series of uh Which, police officers so look i was like what are they all gonna fucking starve in there what's gonna happen and housing minister richard Wynne, while sidestepping the point that these buildings were overcrowded and there should be fucking more oh is he also not acknowledging that we need cr like critically to build more public housing uh he hasn't mentioned it in this particular press release okay, fair. like funnily enough he didn't want to lead with look i know it's fucked anyway because there's like millions of people and, and not like enough no housing, spaces. but instead the federal government decided to give 25 grand to people who want to renovate their gazebos for $130,000. But that's okay. We don't want to actually make jobs for tradesmen that help the poor. Uh, but he said that food and care packages will be distributed. So it's finally going to happen. Daniel Andrews in his big commie red van is going to be driving <laughs> down the street, distributing loaves of bread to the poor. Oh, what a beautiful um, And support will be provided for those with mental health or drug and alcohol issues. Well, it's better than what was happening anyway. As a building full of people, like, With you know, all the addicts oh, in the building start Jones and fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, so this is obviously... Well, a lot of them are Im immigrant families too, right? Or, like, recent migrants, I think, live there because they're, like... They're, they're red control. Well, I don't know how well it's even been communicated to the people in the building who don't they, speak English. That's the thing. So they've they've with the um some of the context for like the increase in the thing is like that families who have been like hanging out in suburbs like Broadmeadows have been like touching too much and like there's like a thinly veiled racism there where it's like ethnic families who touch too much and unlike civilized white people who have like no close re closeness in their relationships and never touch each other at all so like <laughs> all but, those dry white but, folk who get together and don't of, hug each other part of the problem is like it's been it's been critiqued of the government that they aren't communicating to other communities that may not have english as their first language the severity or like the ways to social distance in a way that all of the comms have been sort of like uh, yeah, centered around I, white people and like in, in english but yeah. like surely there's like a huge gulf of like people who don't know what's going on properly. It's pandemic! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's all horrible. It'll be very interesting to see just how tense 
things get in those buildings. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what sort of media gets out of those buildings. I mean, everyone in there has got phones. Yeah. Maybe they'll sort of be doing their own documenting of exactly what it's like to be on police lockdown. Um, and why are those places, like, why do they, like, that seems like a harder quarantine than even the quarantine hotels for return travellers. Why? Yes. In terms of just the well, Actually, it's the comparable of, uh, But in terms of, of the optics, given, like, what's going on with Black Lives Matter, how on earth is this the way forward? Like, surely just like temperature checks and stuff at the gate, like obviously quarantine, but why wouldn't they just be put into third level? Like, it sounds like beauty is 23 people in a, like nine that they flats found. of 3,000. Mm. Either it's worse than they think. Or worse than they're saying. Worse than they're saying. Or it doesn't add up to me. Like why that would be the measure. Like why is that measure so hard and fast? And yet seemingly if rates of community transmission have gone up, uh, within Melbourne's community, why, what, like, why not go hard and fast and just lock down the whole fucking Melbourne or the whole? Yeah, state? it's very weird. Maybe they think if they just keep all the poor people locked in the one building, but ha what, like, that'll be how okay. How can they be so out of touch with the optics, even just like in terms of getting people it riled up? Like what? Bad. It looks. Doesn't bad. look too bad. It is, it is, I think it is bad. Like I think I'm pretty sure it's bad. Like well, I can't imagine it was an easy decision. Like on the other hand, they're like it's a whole. It's like three thousand people in these fucking crammed little Keller buildings. Yeah. And I half of them are just going coronavirus. No, nah, that's bullshit. I'm just going to do what I want. We're all sharing the one cup around here. Pandemic, mate. Yeah. Like, um, oh. So maybe they're like, look, you fucking idiots. You just don't give a shit. You're all pouring out of that building every day and just going Coughing into everywhere. all the schools <laughs> and all the places. We're just fucking hey. shutting it down. I mean, this but is... But then that would be the argument to just shut down the whole of the city. Like, the metro. Well, this is kind of what we advocated state. for at the start of this whole thing. Hard. Just hard lockdown everyone for two or three weeks. Honestly. I could have starved the virus and we would have been past this by now. And I could have gone out for my fucking birthday and had some drinks and danced. So doesn't it feel like though we got to the point where it was just like if we had waited maybe two more weeks, we probably would have been in that position. But we started we were so keen for fucking small business to like come back and like fuck all the people who have even like, though they can't get enough customers no. in to make money anyway. I just well, so immediately everyone you know uh, uh, oh, I'm going to go buy cat food. I better bring my whole fucking family with me into the places and people jammed also, into the shopping centre. Also, as soon as you were back allowed into the world, everyone like I think I don't know if it lined up perfectly with school holidays, but it felt like everybody was so fucking keen to get out and about that people who would never normally be going to rural areas and traveling and doing stuff we're doing that yes every, that's been nuts. every single country trail in the state has been rammed as soon as they could which of course is the issue which is they where... reclosed a bunch of them like a thousand yeah, they steps did. they were like um i'm sorry but you are definitely making everybody ill so please yeah, stop. you motherfuckers are bringing germs and that's the thing is it's people tra it's fine if people at the thousand steps want to go up and down them that's just like a area. critical failure of humans like you never think it's you it's always someone else that gets sick it's always oh, yeah. other people you who can died. imagine if they were like we're locking this place down putting everyone in quarantine yeah, but not and me. we'd be like we gotta get out <laughs> and we and we we break through the lines and we're like yeah we're we the got protagonists out. though we're the protagonists and then we immediately story. spread our fucking 28 days later germs everywhere it's uh i have a lot of friends in adelaide well i know people in friends. adelaide uh and they're all uh we should build a wall and keep victorians out and you know what i agree because us you motherfuckers was it rundle mall yeah we can go it. um fuck that place <laughs> uh but yeah it's uh you, you shouldn't let us in Keep us out. We can't keep our shit together. The other thing I think that's interesting is that, okay, Australia, sure, we've got a sm like a thing happening. However, globally, this shit is not over. Like I think holy like, shit, like, we, it's so bad globally. There's that issue where we were like, like I thought because of how this had gone down and how seriously we took it, I would never be without stores again. I would, I would, you know, learn how to garden. I thought, I don't know, like I thought we I all thought we'd be living like the fucking good life. I guess, but I also thought, I guess, like I don't know. It, it kind of resolved ish and then like immediately I'm back to just like eh whatever I just fucking live for the moment and I'm just like living day by day like it's drinking just, half a beer and throwing yeah. the rest down the toilet uh, plenty more where that not, came from like clearly not like not that egregious but still pretty fucking quickly my brain readjusted just being like it's not gonna oh we're not gonna land a plenty nah. we don't need to worry you know toilet paper is accessible again so nothing ever to worry about and then as this has been creeping back in I think there's two things going on we're like is there a word for it where you're like because you've already been through the trauma you're like Desensitized. I think I'm slightly desensitized to the fact that it's happening. And it's so easy, even though it happened to in our own fucking country, to read the stats about overseas and just be like, you hear the numbers and like you hear them and it's so bad. And that fucking graph is still going Isn't up. Isn't like 10 million worldwide now? The current infection numbers are here. And the death rate is here. Here. <laughs> and when we started doing this show, a whopping two and a half, three months ago, 
the infection rate was like, I remember we did an episode about three weeks in Celeb- where, we, where we celebrate, celebrate. Uh, where we uh, recognized that it hit a million. And now it's 10 times that. Yeah. And we can thank the good old US of A for showing us all how it's done. Well done, guys. <laughs> Police are being used in the hard lockdown of the commission housing. But the Victorian hotels that were housing people coming in from overseas and entering into mandatory quarantine were being serviced by what sounds like the shittiest, cheapest security guard operation possible. Because as always, who will take this tender? Who will do it for the least amount of money? They didn't do it with a tender. They just handed out the contracts to three companies. Oh, fucking typical. It was like, they they literally were like, here, dodgy security... I know a guy. My mate will take yeah. care of this. Yeah, or you, my cousin, does this. You're like, oh. Uh, yeah, so infections have been really bad in the hotels where they've been locking down these people who are in quarantine. Uh, security guards have, uh, supposedly haven't been like ex- exerting due diligence in terms of avoiding infection. Yes. There are rumours of some guards banging some of the, I mean, I don't know what you call them, prisoners, quarantine arenas. I think so. Um, so, yeah, are you like, excellent, this makes sense, of course? Or, but like, I just... <laughs> it's my uh, inherent disappointment in people and uh, systems like, at work here. Of course that fucked it. Of course! I mean, there are a million opportunities for this to go wrong all the time, right? Yeah. The reason I'm for a harder and general lockdown is because, obviously, we've seen this already, not everyone's going to play along. So yes. you have to lock down basically everyone to a fairly high degree just to raise the tide to that level of just kind of basic acceptability for most people so that all the fuckheads who are going to fuck up anyway can continue to fuck up. So that's why I don't believe, just to bring it back to like this partial lockdown, I don't think that that's going to fucking work. Because All or nothing. Yeah, just do it. Just lock us down a couple of, like, I don't know. You're talking about human lives. I don't understand the... The argument. All right, we're finishing with an angry rant against the government because that's bullshit. Here we go. All right, federal government, don't tell us that you couldn't have just afforded to give everyone a basic income of $500 a week each and every human could have just stayed home and starved the virus, okay? Don't tell us you can't afford that and then spend $700 to $270 billion on redundant military equipment that you are buying off your fucking mates that will be absolutely useless in defense against China because if they really want to take over, they will sweep us aside like a house of cards. But that's not happening. It's, it, that's not happening. But it's a fucking rot. It's bullshit. Go fuck yourself. Federal government, give me my fucking money to stay home and flatten the curve, all right? We're all soldiers in a war, a war against the virus. Then where's my fucking money? Where was that? Was I going anywhere else with that? Like, fuck the government? Fuck the government. Well, I've got my dander up, so I need to go calm myself down. But I would like to thank you for joining us again. I know it's been a little while. We missed you. I know you missed us. Uh, except those two angry people commenting on uh, the Social Distinct Facebook page <laughs> who obviously just stumbled across our target ads and like, what's this? I'm furious. I like that there's other people defending in the comments and being like, you, who are you? Just leave them alone. You calm down, shithead. I mean, who gets angry about Facebook ads? My Wait, personal... Me. My personal favourite is the Human Centipede pages that always have discussions in our comments. There are a couple of good guys. Mm-hmm. Maybe Ask several now. guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you had a good time, like, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. Wash your hands, stay home, maybe just in case, or uh, go out, see what happens. If you contract the coronavirus and die, let us know in the comments below.